Well, Ryan, if I'm correct, it, it was Australia and then South Korea and then Abu Dhabi for your last three fights, right? I mean, did you did you sign up for, for fighting all over the world? Or, uh... Uh, man, Mick's sending me all over the place. Uh, he likes to uh, send me on vacation all the time, I guess, these, uh, these work vacations. But I think it was Australia, Australia, Korea, and now Abu Dhabi. What have you learned in that? Because I mean, we always talked about athletes that have to travel like that. I mean, it's, you know, your body retains water, then you got the time change, the difference. I mean, has it been helpful for you to have kind of these experiences and get comfortable doing it? Yeah, I suppose I have experience already. Uh, coming here, I was a little bit more prepared. I knew like probably the things that I could prepare the most was to like bring food with me um, because my first time ever fighting out of the country was in Melbourne. And I had, uh, I went, I was hospital. I don't even know if anybody knows this. I was hospitalized after my weight cut. Uh, when I was going to fight Ben Nguyen, I had to go to the hospital because I was getting sick after the, right after weigh-ins. And uh, Jeff Nowitzki actually gave me a ride to the hospital. And um, yeah, the, the water retention, the, uh, the long flights, everything was, you know, it sucked. And then, but I think the, the worst thing was trying to figure out like what to eat when you're in a different country because it's not like you can go to Whole Foods, you can go to the grocery store and just get like your typical Pedialyte or your typical whatever salt snacks or whatever you use to hydrate back up and you kind of have to, to figure it out from there on out and uh, yeah, your body retains the water, you can't, you have to be careful, you know, and I think uh, after fighting overseas so many times I've kind of gotten my routine down. Nice, indeed. Well, let's talk about it. Last, last time you fought, it had been after a two-year layoff and, and a lot of struggles. We know all that. It's been about seven months, I think, since then. What's what's life been like since then? I mean, as, as what's the style been? What's what, what's the goals been during that time? Man, just avoiding the coronavirus probably has been the uh, the number one thing to try to try to you know be careful of. I train out of uh, the Hensel Gracie Academy in New York City where I think the virus had hit the hardest and uh, that was probably the biggest obstacle I had to deal with uh, of, of this past uh, fight camp and training this year was, uh, you know, I take public transportation in order to get to the city so like figuring out a routine of like, you know, make sure you don't touch anything, make sure you're sanitizing, make sure you're not uh, you know, make sure you're taking zinc after because I hear that zinc is what kills the virus if you feel like you've come in contact with the virus. So I've kind of like gotten my routine down of like how to take care of myself and how to be like responsible in that sense. Um, but yeah, it's it's been a uh, it's been a, a roller coaster this year. I had to deal with the death in the family earlier this year, which kind of like changed the fight date several times because, you know, um, leading up it was my grandfather had passed away and then leading up to it it was really hard to get to the hospital to see him and then you know it was kind of like oh he's going to be leaving soon you got to come visit him and he's, oh he's hanging on and it was like okay well you can't come visit him anymore because the virus is getting too out of hand and then even when he did pass it was like okay we're going to do the funeral on this date nope we got to change it to this date nope we got to change it to this date and then it was like um, my family was you know i needed to be a part of the uh, funeral services and then it was like oh but actually you can't and we're not you know it was just a one one little issue after the other it's it's kind of been rough and then uh yeah that's that's pretty much it and i had a newborn uh i have a I have a six month old at home and uh yeah, my 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 daughter was born right before i left for korea on the last fight so i think it, the routine well, not the routine but it went that I, my daughter was born and then it was like the, the next day or the next morning I left for Korea so I got to see her hold her for a second then I had to take off so it's been uh, it's been wild man that's crazy so is this a good time to be fighting or is this a bad time to be man, fighting? man it's, it's great to be fighting now you know it's I'm part of a historic event and you know now I'm co-main event of, during uh, fight island fights you know I, I was one of the ones who was like oh yeah that's not realistic that's probably not going to happen and now I'm you know I'm you know co-main event of, of this event and I'm actually here in Abu Dhabi and it's been uh it's been crazy. What do you think about that slot, the co-main event slot? I mean, obviously you've been away for a long time. I mean, to get that, you feel like maybe that's the, the organization showing they got some faith in you or something? Yeah, I think so. I think the uh, when you when you kind of look at the fight card, I think Tim and I probably have the most experience out of everybody else that's on the fight card. Um, you know, Tim was a former title contender, and, uh, you know, I think uh, – having us two as a co-main event was probably the next option. Um, I think originally we were the second fight on the fight card and then when, when uh, Frankie and Pedro fell through, um, I didn't think we were going to be co-main event and then my manager was like, I think you're co-main event and then uh, you know, the official word came out and so it was pretty cool. Nice. Talk about the matchup with Tim, I mean obviously such a, a weird dude to get ready for, right? The way he fights, I mean it's just so odd. Like, how, do you, how do you prep for an opponent like that? 
You know, we, we, we looked at a lot of footage. We, we went back. Tim has a lot of fights in the UFC. He's, you know, he's a big veteran. He's, uh, and he's got a lot of rounds, not just, not just a lot of fights. He has a lot of time in the UFC. You know, he's had a lot of decision fights. And uh, so we really went back and studied, you know, a lot of habits, a lot of things that he's done consistently in each fight. And uh, we try to have training partners implement those those things. It was an awkward style to prepare for. I think it was probably harder on my training partners to prepare so awkwardly for some of the wild stuff that Tim does. But like I said, you know, we were able to actually pick apart pretty pretty consistent stuff that we were able to see. You know, oh, he went for this in this fight. Oh, he went for that again in this fight. You know, it was kind of something we saw. You know, three or four fights in a row, he was going for similar things in each fight. So that's kind of like what we based our our camp off of. And then, you know emphasizing what I'm good at and what my skills are at and looking at my past fights. I think my, my biggest preparation, I sat down with my coaches and we were like, you know, how would you fight you if you were Tim? And how would you fight Tim, you know, if you're you? So what do you see open against you and what do you see open against him? And then based off of that, we kind of came up with a game plan and um, pretty pretty prepared for this. That's a good game. Well, last thing for me, give me an idea, like, what's the goal here? I mean, obviously, it's always to win, but, I mean, with everything that you got going on, with all the struggles you, you had to, to, to get back to action, I mean, what, what are you doing? Are you trying to make up for lost time? Are you trying to get people to talk about you as a contender again, or is it a slow build? What's what's the goal here? Man, I'm just, I just want to be back to, to being busy, you know. Um, this may be the quickest turnaround, even though it's been seven months since the last fight. I've had a lot of time in between each fight camp, so I feel like uh, – you know, just being consistent. I'm just, I'm just ready to be back in there. I'm ready to get more fights. You know, I, I still, I had a, I have three fights left on my contract. I like to really knock those out quickly. You know, I want to, I think that's been my biggest obstacle is getting fights consistently. You know, I think uh, the more time you have in the UFC, the more mat time you have, which is like what we used to say in wrestling, the more mat time, the better you get. So I think that's kind of been my hardest part is getting consistent fights. And so that's kind of my goal here is I want to be able to like not be so, uh, so uncomfortable coming into the fight you know I've been here I was here just a few months ago so like I actually feel very comfortable this is probably the most comfortable I've ever prepared for a fight and this is probably the most comfortable I've felt coming into a fight so you, you spoke about you know weight cuts and being bloated coming off planes and stuff like that what's it like doing a weight cut when you're stuck in the same room for 48 hours man it's hot outside so it's actually kind of easy to uh, just go outside and start sweating I'm a little bit ahead of schedule on my weight cut actually so um you know, we got here a little bit ahead of time. I think typically we're here, um, I think we had like nine days before the fight was going to actually happen. I may be wrong, it's eight or nine days. And typically fight week, you show up, I think it's four or five days before the fight. So we had a little bit of extra time to start dealing with stuff like that. Um, you know, I, I, I've had a lot of experience now with traveling overseas. So I've been able to like prepare in that sense, kind of what I was saying. I've been able to like prepare ahead of time for like, you know, that bloated feeling and then um, coming in a little bit lighter than I usually do. You know, you spoke about how the coronavirus has affected your life, you know, traveling around New York and dealing with um, personal issues and stuff. When the UFC started doing these shows, there's like a lot of criticism that they were trying to go. Now you've been at one. Do you feel safer here or do you feel safer at home? Definitely feel safer here, you know. They, uh, I mean, just on Fight Island, is that what you mean? Like, uh, in general, like working during this. Oh, no, the, the, working during the pandemic has been kind of scary, um, especially being in New York City and having to take flights because I live in Dallas. So, like, I've had to bounce back and forth a lot um, between Dallas and New York City. And, uh, you know, actually in Texas, the coronavirus had spiked uh, pretty greatly over the past couple of weeks. And then New York City was like just like insanely spiked over there. So uh, it's been kind of scary to, like, avoid all of that. Um, hopefully I've already caught the virus and just past it. I haven't taken an antibody test, but I kind of assumed like by now, if I'm not testing positive for any virus, then I've probably had it already. Um, that's kind of been like the scariest part of it all is trying to prepare and avoid that. Um, and then getting training partners, you know, it was in New York City, it, like I said, it, it hit there the worst. So like it was tough to get training partners at first into New York City to that would be willing to, you know, travel through everything to get there. But we were able to pull a group of guys together and we actually had a pretty good camp. You spoke about being when when it's a, to be more active. How active do you want to be? Let's say there's an opening at future UFC card, you know, five lines this month. Is that something you would be willing to? Yeah, definitely. You know, I want to be as active as I can. As long as I'm light enough and as long as my weight's down, you know, now that I've um 
I've, I've got my weight down pretty low consistently. I'd like to keep it there. I don't want to get too fat after the fight. And that's kind of like something that everybody falls into. They get that comfortable feeling after they get paid. They take a couple of weeks off and then they gain, you know, an extra 15 pounds or whatever the case may be. And uh, I'd like to avoid that. I want to I want to jump right back into camp. I want to get through this fight without having any injuries so that like I don't gain any weight in between. And I want to I want to go home, maybe take a week off, go right back to New York City and pick up where I left off. I'm sorry, I didn't hear the last part. These these race cars behind. Can't fight for the title, and so his opponent wouldn't be able to fight because there was someone, no one else for him. You, 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 you fought in the past as a mentor. That's not you. you Absolutely. If they give me, if there's an opportunity open for me to be a headliner or to fight for a title or to step up, you know, I'm I'm 100% game for whatever they throw at me. Like I said, I want to be as consistent as I can. So if they're like, you know, fight to fight on Wednesday, and if you got to fight again in a couple of, I'm you know, I'm ready. I'm close on weight, so I'll make another weight cut if I have to. Yeah, they were excited, you know. They they uh, they weren't too worried about um, catching the virus. I'm pretty good about you know sanitizing my hands and making sure that if I have a cough or anything, which I haven't, but if uh, if anything was going on, you know, I felt pretty good about it. I think my family was excited. My dad was in the Navy for 24 years, and so he was in the Middle East a lot. So he was pretty excited for me to come over here and see the stuff that he got to see. Even though I've been pretty locked down and just the green or the the safe zone of where we can be in the city. Um, it's still a good experience. It's still something that they were excited for me to do. Congratulations on the birth of your child. Does that affect how you fight at all uh, for the first time? Because obviously you want to take maybe less damage while maximizing the amount of money that you're going to bring in. Uh, no, thank you for saying that. Um, um, you know, it's definitely something, I'm not going to lie, it's definitely something that you think about the more you have behind your family. Um, you know, I've, I've kind of been one of these guys that will take a punch to give a punch. Um, and then after my wife getting on my case, after getting so many scars on my face, um, she's been kind of like, you know, how about we stop taking so much damage and we start slipping some punches and stuff. Um, so yeah, definitely trying to keep my brain intact uh, while my career is going on. I want my, I want, I want to be, I've always said that I'd like to be in this sport as long as I can, make as much money as I can for as long as I can, but get out of the sport while my brain still works. And uh, hopefully that's, I'm still on that track. Good luck Wednesday. Thank you. Perfect. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Thank you.